Good morning and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 572 and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my beautiful backyard. I'm Krista Namdahl and if you're joining me live, please say hello. Please let me know if you're crafting this morning. Are you sewing? Are you knitting? Are you crocheting? Are you cooking, baking, anything? If you're doing anything creative, I know we'd all love to hear about it. And I'll wait a few seconds here for people to start popping over from pre-chat and notifications. I'll move that screen over. Move it back just a little bit. I want to be able to read the comments, that's all. Hi Lisa, happy Friday. Thanks for joining live. Happy Friday, everybody. Whether you watch the recorded version or the live version, please always feel welcome to leave comments because I can reply to all of them. Hi, Grace and Thea and Joe. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. Hi, Christine and Joe and Melissa, Judy, Naomi. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 572. Hi, Gay and Carrie and Judy. Missed a name. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Margaret. Thanks for joining live, everybody. Wearing a couple of crocheted items this morning, an Amazon item this morning, and we have a new video premiere that's going to be live right after the podcast is over this morning. Hi, Becky and Kim. Hi, Sharon. Happy Friday, everybody. Is anybody doing anything creative today so far? Has anybody been crocheting or baking or knitting? <laughs> Lisa, I don't have any uh, plans to dye yarn this week, but I will let you know when I do. Hi, Edna. I do have lots of different colors in stock still, though. Hi, Val. Good morning. Lisa's crocheting already. Wonderful. I was crocheting this morning. I tried to finish something in time to show you guys this morning, but it's not quite done. Hi, sunshine. Joe's been knitting this morning. That's great. I will show you the um, behind the scenes of something that I've been working on. I started a project last night, but really hope to have it done in time to wear to show you this morning, and it's not done, but that's okay. I, I did my best, <laughs> and it'll be out soon. Hi, Azza, thanks for joining live. Hi, Constance, good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Someone's got three projects going, that's wonderful. Ah, Carrie's just getting out of bed. Well, that's good too. Hi, Jill. Hi, Diane. Hi, Crystal. All right, lots of people joining us this morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 572. I'm Krista Namdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my beautiful tropical backyard that I am so happy to share with you. I have plant progress to show you this morning. I have patterns to share with you this morning. I want to invite you to a new video premiere that's launching at 10 a.m. this morning. The tutorial video for the shrug I'm wearing, the Fine Jillian Shrug, the tutorial video for this beautiful shrug is going to be premiering at 10 a.m., which will be just right after the podcast is over. It's about, I think it's about 30 minutes or so. No, I can't remember. Let's see if I can find that easily. I'll tell you in a second. Ah, it doesn't say when it's up there. When it's Anyway, it's about 20 or 30 minutes. It's not that long, but I go over step by step how to read the chart and how to do the crocheting and how to take it from a flat piece to join it three dimensionally. So hopefully you'll really enjoy the video and it will empower you to want to make this beautiful shrug for yourself. Uh, it's um, again, it's premiering right after the podcast this morning at 10 a.m. So if you would like to join me for that, that would be great. So it's not a live video. It is a recorded video that I've already made for the tutorial, but it's premiering, which means there'll still be live chat going on. 
so you can chat with me and everyone else which is amazing during a tutorial video because if you have questions as i'm going along you can ask me live and hopefully i can answer your questions there so today i'm wearing a crochet flower pin and the fine jelly and shrug and i've linked both of those patterns in the video description here and also shared it as a comment on the video so if you want to find those links they're easy to find i also uh, shared a link for the dress that i'm wearing i'll stand up real quick so you can see it this is what i call a real wrap dress you know how sometimes they're faux wrap dresses where they're sewn in on one side and then the one side flap looks like it's wrapped well this one is truly a wrap dress just like a bathrobe so it comes flat you wrap one side i can't show you otherwise i'd have to take my clothes off and that wouldn't be very cool but there's a hole right here in the dress where you slide the one strap through and then you wrap the dress a couple of times and tie it what i love about this dress first of all it's jersey material so it's super stretchy never wrinkles you pull it right out of the dryer and it's ready to go I love the coverage here. Notice how it's not low cut at all. I think that that's really nice, especially on a wrap dress to have a little more modest coverage up here. If this is the navy and white polka dot dress. It comes in several other colors as well. I think it comes in some solids and it definitely comes in some other variations of the polka dot. Um, I love it. I think it's just so fun. I think it's easy to wear it casual or wear it um, dressier depending on what type of shoes and accessories you add to it but i do want to point out that it's a little on the shorter side it's not mini but it's you know mid thigh and i'm five foot nine and this is a size large to give you an idea of how long it is so and i think it's around 25 dollars on amazon so you can uh i've shared the link to that dress as well as this crochet pattern and this crochet pattern so the flower pin that i'm wearing is actually just a floral a flower motif but it's a really beautiful flower motif done in a spiral with some surface crochet to create the petals on top of the motif so see how it's flat on the back side and then it has surface crochet on the front um, i made two of them right and then what i decided to do this morning is take the flower pin that i usually wear them with and see, this one has a rhinestone. These are also available in my Amazon shop. And if you go to the link to, uh, um, to get this pattern, on that pattern page, you'll get the pattern. You'll also get the, it's a free pattern. You'll get the free pattern. You'll see the video tutorial and you'll see a link for where to buy these. These flower pins are so awesome for crochet decorations, especially when you wanna do them in your hair. Um, it has a rhinestone on it, which I thought was perfect for adding to crochet flowers because then that ends up looking like the flower center, right? If you were going to add a bead, you'd put a bead there, but you don't need to because the because the hairpin already has a rhinestone on it. Isn't that great? So today what I decided to do on a whim, just to see if it would work, it wasn't sure if it'd be too heavy or not, I added two different sizes of that flower pin together. So like, for example, this one I did in Be So Fine yarn, and this one I did in Be So Sporty yarn. So you can see how different the sizes came out. And because one's bigger than the other, they end up stacking very nicely, where you can see the larger one behind the smaller one. It just gives it that much more depth. And there's then the multiple colors. And so then I just place that flower pin right into my hair and voila, voila, voila we're done. <laughs> um, and thanks to everybody for sharing with me the rules on which side you wear a flower in your hair because I am single and not in a relationship. I am now wearing it on the correct side, which is the right ear. <laughs> so thanks everybody for that. I certainly want to be correct <laughs> any chance I can. Uh, oh, I did want to show you guys that I, if, any, if uh, unless anybody has already seen it, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Uh, remember the tutorial I showed you really quickly in the podcast yesterday for making a no-sew 
hair uh, no sew face mask out of a bandana and two rubber bands well i just wanted to let you know that i ended up making a tutorial video for it last night it's a little over a minute if you want to check it out if you want to share it with anybody that would be awesome too and i wanted to show you that i did it with a pressed bandana that didn't have the crochet edging on it and show you how much flatter that ended up being it turned out a lot nicer than the one that I quickly showed you in the podcast. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the video, um, you can. I shared it on my Facebook page, on my Instagram TV, and here on my YouTube channel. So wherever you like to share things, I know a lot of people have been really excited about making it. Um, like I said, it's not meant for people to replace N95 masks for working in the hospital or anything. But a few people have said that they feel more comfortable going to the grocery store today and leaving the house today because they can quickly make this and put it on. There's so many layers of fabric in here because of all the folds. Um, Christine shared it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm really glad to be able to share that with people. So I just wanted to show you that it is a lot more flat and streamlined when you use one that doesn't have the crochet edging on it. It just made it a little too bulky. So that's that. Oh, and also if you don't have bandanas at home, this bandana was 22 inch square of fabric. So if you have fat quarters or fa fabric remnants lying around, you could use those. If you wanted to just take an old t-shirt that you're not wearing anymore and cut a t-shirt into that same size, square it was a 22 inch square bandana before i began and um again if you wanted to cut up an old t-shirt you could absolutely do that too so just if you don't have bandanas that's okay too some people are comfortable using um hair ponytails some people are more comfortable with the rubber bands you do you uh if you have rubber bands or ponytail holders that don't fit your ears just put them on here and then take a ribbon or a piece of yarn and tie them to the back of your head, right? It doesn't have to go over your ears. I know sometimes when people have to wear masks for extended periods of time, they don't like anything staying behind their ears. So use those as little handles to tie a ribbon to tie it behind your head. There's lots of ways to still um, modify that. So don't worry if you don't have bandanas at home. Don't worry if your rubber bands don't fit your face. There are all sorts of ways that you could modify this. So you could take fabric that you have, you could cut up old clothes that you're not wearing anymore, um, all sorts of ways. Um, that's great, Sharon. Sharon's been making uh, masks for her daughter's dental office. That's wonderful. It's so wonderful to see so many people coming together and helping each other. Oh, wow, Jill, that's a good reminder. Yes, women tore their petticoats to make um, band-aids or bandages in the Civil War. Yes, women have been doing that throughout history. Absolutely. That's a great reminder, too. Does anybody have any questions before we go on? Yes, necessity is the mother invention. Absolutely, Jill. I 100% agree. I'll wait a few minutes, I'll wait a few seconds or something before I move on. See if anybody has any questions so far. Pretty excited to show you a plant update today. So do you remember how my friend who has a luscious vegetable garden here in Southwest Florida, or Naples specifically. She uh, gave me some mint a couple weeks ago and I watched a video saying that you could actually sprout herbs from clippings. Well, in the video that I watched on YouTube, thank God for YouTube, <laughs> uh, it said to soak a couple of the clippings in a cup of water and that within a week or so, you would start to see roots sprout and then you can plant them. Well, I have some really exciting news to show you. Oh, Grace, if I had any basil right now, I would be doing it with basil for sure. I want, I just haven't been to the store. Uh, okay, so here is my little mason jar with the clippings of mint from my friend and wanted to show you my babies. Okay, that one didn't work. Okay, of the three, only, or no, of the four, only two work so far. But look at these. Can you see that? Look at all those roots that have sprouted. I hope that's showing up. Let me come over here. Where is it going to show up best? There. Oh, yeah. There you can see the roots. Don't those look amazing? 
I am so excited. So sometime, at some time today, uh, sometime, see, and this one's a dud. Okay, so we have two duds, and we have two that were, oh no, that's not a dud. That one has a root too. So we've got three out of four that are successful, and I will be planting them later today. Give you a quick update. Here is my ginger root, which is not even a week old. So those have not sprouted yet, and that's okay. My celery has started growing, though. Look at that little baby celery stalk. Can you see the stalk? Those are like little baby celery stalks on there now. <laughs> Oh, yes, Janet, I'll be planting the mint in a pot. Can you see my baby celery stalk, though? So stinking cute. I have a full um, a full growth of, of uh, green onions to um, harvest again. So that will be either my second or third harvest since using up the roots that would normally have gone in the garbage. I have my beautiful orchid blooming. And this one, look at all the buds on this one. This one's going to have one... We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven buds on this one that are coming soon. And this one here has three right now. Then the mandevilla, I think it's taking nicely to my, to my trellis. See, I, I wove some of the vines through there. And then as it grows, I'll weave them up some more. And then when it gets taller, you're getting, I know, they're two inches. We definitely have, I'm not gonna go out there, but I can show you, we've got a bunch of plumeria blooming again. You can see them over there and over there. And there's a bunch of buds everywhere else. So I'm guessing by Monday, when we come back for the podcast on Monday, by Monday, we'll have a bunch of uh, flowers up there. Maybe we'll even have more blown down that I could wear one in my hair again. Yeah, so very, very excited. Oh, baby Bjorn, I ignored you. Hold on. You came up to see me and I ignored you because I was looking at plants. Come here, buddy. Oh, who's a poor baby? Did you get ignored? You poor baby. <gasps> who's a poor baby that was being ignored? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Okay. So yes, when I can go back to the store again, would definitely love to sprout some basil. And there's a handful of other veggies that I'd like to plant too, but I'll need some potting soil and pots at some point too. So anyway, we'll get to that when the timing is right. I wanted to show you a project that I started last night, but did not get a chance to finish in time to show the pattern yet today i did my rough i'm gonna do three different versions of this with three different colors and, and make it like a three in one pattern so to do the ruffle cold shoulder decoration on a tank top so it's crochet on fabric where i took a store-bought tank top and adding and adding the ruffle so i did i did the ruffle across the front and the back and then left it open to come over the arm so it's like a cold shoulder top and I used the sweet Clara stitch pattern you might recognize it in there and used the edging that we did on the lower edge of the dress just because I'm still in the mood of it and I used be so fine yarn and colorway uh, Caribbean turquoise but it's not fixed it's not finished yet yeah I don't know why it's not focusing for you guys it's in focus here must be some sort of buffering other people are seeing it so maybe there's something with connection anyway so it's going to look like that so there'll be this will go over your arm here and look like a cold shoulder yeah, sorry guys, I don't know why your internet isn't working. The picture's, the picture's not blurry for me, and I see other people seeing it too. So hopefully it'll come back soon. But anyway, I thought it'd be fun to do three versions of this, because once I teach the technique for getting started, you could do any stitch pattern. So, so then you'd be able to do any stitch pattern. So I thought it'd be fun to do three different versions of that. So this is the first one that I did last night but didn't get it finished in time to uh, try it on and show you this morning. So 
hopefully by sometime next week I will have them done and patterns written up and all that good stuff. Yep, sorry guys, I don't know why your internet's not uh, showing well. It's showing that I have connection here. It's Maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's other people's connection, maybe it's my connection, but it's not saying I have a problem. And there's nothing I can do about it anyway. <laughs> What is the base of that blouse? It's uh, it's just a it's just a store bought tank top, just a basic store bought tank top. Here's another one of them that I haven't worked on yet, so you can see it's just a basic two dollar Walmart tank top, I think. So it's like a stretch cotton blend. Let's see what it says. It's ninety five percent cotton and five percent spandex. Sure. Someone wants to see it again now that their screen's not blurry. All right, so here's, so the ruffle's gonna go across the front and across the back, and then it's not attached around the sleeve so that it'll come over your arm and it'll sit here like a cold shoulder ruffle. Isn't that going to be beautiful? But it's not done yet. I have to fix some things it's going to be so pretty though. And so I thought I'd do it with three different stitch patterns for this particular one with Be So Fine yarn in Caribbean Turquoise. I did a version of the Sweet Clara top pattern. You might recognize that with that beautiful petal edging like we did on the dress. And so uh, I think I'm going to do something with the Minka Crochet Pico fringe for one of them. I think I'm going to do some sort of a stitch pattern and then do some fringe at the bottom. And then on the third one, I haven't decided yet, but it, they'll, all three will have different stitch patterns, but they'll all follow the same beginning. So how you get started is going to be the same. And then, um, and then I'll just show three different charts and three different stitch patterns. And then what you'll need to do is just, I'll share it. What I'm going to be doing is not writing it specifically. Um, yeah, they're $2 at Walmart, Lisa. Exactly, they're $2. So when you go, think in terms of what color yarn you have or what color yarn I sell and what color yarns you love. And, you know, even for like this teal color, give you an example. Ocean teal looks really nice with it, but so does Tuscan Terrace, right? And Tuscan Terrace actually would have looked cute with the turquoise one. And I have a coral one that it would look cute with too. I'm getting ahead of myself here this morning. Anyway, so you can use variegated colors, you can use solid colors, you could do things that are um, contrast or complementary. These happen to work really well matchy-matchy and being complementary, but uh, high contrast would be super fun too. Adding white to a bright color or vice versa, or adding black to a color. <laughs> or using a variegated yarn or buying a tank top in a print. I mean, there's there's no wrong way to do it. And if you have a dress that has tank top straps like that, imagine adding that decoration. And imagine doing this in bling yarn to make something a little dressy for evening or just making it sparkly, um, adding beads. There's just a lot of different ways that you could really amp this up too. <laughs> and it's easy and it's quick. I did this in a couple of hours last night. Well, maybe more than a couple, but, and like I said, it's still not done, but we're getting there. So I wanted to show you that as a sneak peek this morning. All right, guys, you want some treats? There you go. All right, what else am I gonna show you? Um, oh, the quick sneak peek of the next dress that I'm going, that I'm, back engineering writing the pattern for is this one. I'm not sure if I s wrote the, named it yet or not, but I think what I'm gonna do for this pattern is write it as a top and as a dress, because I think the be this jacket here in the front would be really cute as a tank top too. So I'll back the whole thing up so you can see more of it. Do you guys remember when I was interviewed for a magazine about women in business a couple years ago. And I, the photo of me in the magazine was in 
a white dress with on the beach with a jean jacket. This is the dress I wore. So I've had this for a couple of years now and just haven't um, written up the pattern. So this is something that I'm gonna work on here real soon. So it's corset tied even down the middle here. So beautiful. And then the sides have that same kind of detail. So the sides have sections of double crochet and then I think it's corset tie. No, that's just chains. But so pretty. Really excited to share this one with you. If someone just mentioned beach cover-up, absolutely would be a great beach cover-up. But also a beautiful dress. And again, like we talked about with the Sweet Clara dress, the color of slipper dress you wear underneath this could really make um, a big difference in the way that it looks and the way that you can style it and even um, for the type of, out of event you would go to with it. But so many different ways to wear this, whether you wore it with a white slip, a nude slip, a black, a navy, a bright color, um, so many different ways you could do that. Yeah, wearing a black, making it in black with a black slip, making it in black and wearing a nude slip would be amazing too. Uh, yes, this is in Be So Fine yarn. This is colorway Chantilly Lace. But yes, making it in black and wearing either a black or nude slip would be stunning. But honestly, is there a wrong color to make something like that in? And what I love about it is it's really simple stitches. It is, it is just a simple shell. Can you see that? It's a simple shell and some simple bands of double crochet, but really is just a knockout stunner. So be working on that hopefully this weekend and getting that pattern written up soon, charts written and get sizing on multiple sizes for it. And then I'm working on that color block. Oh, that's for color blocking yet, but uh, let's put that cold shoulder ruffle tank top on there and see how she looks on a Yeah, so I experimented with not attaching the ruffle to the tank top, except but on the sleeve, on the, except but on the uh, straps. And that was not a good idea. So I will be sewing it down and explaining to you how to do this with a little more. Um, that's why I didn't, wasn't sharing it quite yet this morning. Oh, you're not gonna, you know what? It's a lot bigger than my mannequin. <laughs> because it's, it's an extra large. Uh, it's not gonna work on the mannequin. Not unless I flip her straps around here to tighten it up. Does that work? No, <laughs> it doesn't work either. <laughs> ah, that's the beauty of live, right? Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get the image of it because your arms would go here, see? <laughs> Joe, uh, I don't even know how I get what I get done. I don't know what to tell you. I know that I really like to challenge myself. I love to hustle. Um, and I do try to stay pretty organized, but uh, I know that it looks like I get a lot done and I do get a lot done, but I don't know. Just always hustling, I guess. All right, so unfortunately you can't really get the full view of, full idea of this because your arms would be here. And so it'll, oh, that's not too bad. So it'll look more like that. All right, so imagine my hands are shoulders and arms. <laughs> and that, and so this will come up to the actual edge here. So anyway, it's, it's coming along. And then is that everything I was gonna show today? I think so. <laughs> so if you want information on any of the patterns or videos that we talked about, um, Janet, I work 15, 16 hours a day and seven days a week. So I mean, there's a reason why it looks like I put out a lot of content. It's because I work very long, very consistently long hours. Um, lots of lists, Benzie. I have lots of lists and I make lots of notes. Uh, on my phone, on my computer, and in notebooks. Uh, I juggle a lot of things, so the best way for me to stay organized is with lots of lists, and they work really well for me. 
Yes, Janet, I do love what I do. It's still hard to work that many hours, but I do love what I do. Ah, uh, yes, Grace, making lists and knowing where you are is two different, where they are is two different things. I agree. <laughs> That's why I love writing notes in notebooks, but it's a much riskier thing to do that than to make the lists on the computer. <laughs> For the, I have the same issue, yes. All right, so let's read some quotes. What do you think? So I've got all seven issues of Create, Share, Inspire notebook with me this morning, and I'm going to randomly pick quotes in each one. Oh, this is a good one. I always like this. You, your, uh, this is from Buddha. You yourself, as much as anyone in the entire universe, which is issue one, volume two. No, volume one, issue two. <laughs> um, this is Swami Vivekananda. Do not lower your goals to the level of your abilities. Instead, raise your abilities to the height of your goals. Yes, and if you are home, uh, without much to do right now, this is a great opportunity to think about something that you would like to learn. Absolutely. This is volume one, issue three. Random, 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 doesn't matter. This is from Jane, Aust Jane Austen. There is no charm equal to tenderness of the heart. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Jane Austen. There is no charm equal to tenderness of the heart. So true, yes. Volume one, issue four. We just read this one and this is where it kills me because I would really love to open another page but I promised I would allow the randomness to really work and I do believe that it's because on any given moment when I hit a page, even if it's something we've read recently or super recently, I do believe that there's a reason for everything and that if I landed on this page, it's because somebody watching needs to hear this. So um, that's why I'm trying to work on myself allowing randomness. <laughs> this is from Francis of Assisi. A single sunbeam is enough to drive away many shadows. And I know that that's something that we could all get a daily or multiple times a day reminder. A single sunbeam is enough to drive away many shadows. Very true. Volume one, issue five. This is from Emily Dickinson. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. Very, very pretty. Thank you, Emily Dickinson. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. Beautiful. Volume one, issue six. Alexander Graham Bell. The only difference between success and failure is the ability to take action. Absolutely. Volume one, issue seven. This is Robert Louis Stevenson. So long as we love, we serve. So long as we are loved by others, I should say that we are almost indispensable and no man is useless while he has a friend. Oh, how beautiful is that? Robert Louis Stevenson, so long as we love, we serve. So long as we are loved by others, I should say that we are almost indispensable and no man is useless while he has a friend. So beautiful. Okay, so don't forget in about 30 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, we're going to be premiering the brand new tutorial video for the, uh, the Fine Jillian Crochet Shrug. So if you want to join me back here, uh, I'd love for you to watch the video with me. And if you have any questions, I'll be there live to answer any questions you might have. If you want any information about what we've talked about today, all of the links are provided in the video description as well as in the comments. We have a bird's wanting you to have a lovely weekend, I think. <laughs> Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my garden, my friendly birds and beautiful sounds that they make, my sweet kitties, 
my show and tells, chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and if you can join me in a few minutes, we'll go do this tutorial video together. Bye everybody, see you soon.